All right, let me add just a little bit more of what I just told you. Just to, I wasn't real happy with how that finished off. So um, let's just let's just say that um, I have a vector a that's um, eight in the i. We'll leave off units for a second. Plus two in the j, and I have another vector b that is maybe two in the i and maybe negative three in the j. What I'm saying is when you foil this in, when you do a dot b, that's how you would write that for the dot product. That's why it's called the dot product because I use a dot as opposed to a cross, which would be the cross product. Um, I could foil that in, but it turns out the only... Um, the only components that are going to last in that when I do FOIL it is the i's. When you multiply 8i times dot 2i, you get 16. Now, it doesn't, the i's don't, you don't bring the i. It's not like it's i squared or anything. That's just 16. Plus, and this is going to be 2 times negative 3, which is negative 6. Not j. You lose the j. And so that just gives me... Um, 10. You can add these now because they're not vector quantities anymore. Those are just scalars. So you can just add them. So you get 10. Notice that's why it's called a scalar product because that's scalar. But it's also called a dot product because that's a dot. So those are the two, those are the two ways that we designate that type of multiplying of vectors. Um, let me just um, repeat then, if you have a vector A and a vector B, and you do A dot B, what you're really doing when you do A dot B is you're taking the part of A that's parallel to B, the part of A, the component of A that's in the direction of B, just its magnitude, and you're multiplying by B, the magnitude of B. So the part of A that's in the direction of B is this part. That's the part that you want to take, that part. If that's theta, then um, A dot B is equal to um, a cosine of theta times, so that's that part, times the whole length of b. Notice I don't put vectors there because um, these are scalar quantities at this point. Now if you understand that, then you know that when I multiply a vector i, i is a unit vector, it's got a magnitude of 1, and it's in the positive x direction. So when I dot that, when I multiply that with the dot product into that, I dot I, how much of this is in the direction of that? Well, it turns out that all of this is in that direction. So I would multiply 1 times 1, which gives me 1, and I, and I lose the, I actually lose the unit vector. That just is 1. Where is um, j dot j? You know what this is going to be? That's going to equal 1. How about when I, when I dot product i dot j? What is that going to give me? Well, how much of i is in the direction of j? Absolutely none of it. So that gives me 0. How about j dot k? k is in the z direction. That's going to give me zero. So that's what I'm talking about. So let's just do one more just for good measure. I have a, a vector. Let's say I have a vector C. It's um, two meters in the I direction. Plus three meters in the J direction. And I have another vector d, and that's actually a force, and that's one newton in the i direction, yikes, i direction, plus 
um, negative 4 newtons in the j direction. And I'll dot those into one another, c dot d. That's going to be equal to, I just multiply these together, 2 meters in the i direction dot 1 newton in the i direction plus, and I'll dot the j's together, 3 meters in the j direction dot negative 4 newtons in the j direction. Well, when I do this, the dots, the, the i's are going to disappear. So how much of the 2 meters is in the direction of the 1 newton? Well, the 2 meters is in the positive x direction, and so is the 1 newton. So when you do this, it gives you just 2 newton meters in the i direction. No, it doesn't. Just 2 newton meters. You lose the direction. Plus um, negative 12 newton meters. So c dot d gives me just negative 10 newton meters. Notice that's a scalar quantity. That's all I have to say to you. All right, hope that helped out a little bit.